Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, our global pandemic anxiety driven meditation hour, which is only 10 minutes long. Um, I apologize for the awkward angle and the peculiar location where we're currently traveling right now. And this is actually the wrong laptop and I have to mount this microphone very strangely. So I hope you can hear me all right. Um, ground rules as usual. Um, if this is for friends and family. I am not teaching meditation. I am not a meditation teacher. These are just some um, back and forth discussions the way that we might have over coffee um, if we were actually able to do anything over coffee. <laughs> Um, so we've, uh, we've made our transition out of institutional quarantine and we're staying at a friend's house right now. Um, <clears throat> the, the next, uh, conversation topic I want to deal with, um, came in two parts. So one was, um, a generic, uh, question about how to overcome resistance to change, which is a, a bigger topic and we'll cover that later. But um, a smaller initial topic is how to deal with specifically resistance to meditate. And I, I think that that's actually an interesting one because I have um, um, encountered a pretty discreet example of uh, that that particular difficulty recently. Um, I so I, I think we all have been um, engaged in electronics, probably maybe even more than usual during the lockdown. Um, we're having video calls with family and we're producing YouTube videos we wouldn't otherwise and um, often uh, I've found myself getting a little bound up by my phone and so for the last uh, two or three weeks I've been really trying to make a point of at the end of the workday I close down my computer, I turn off the monitor, and I airplane mode my phone so that I'm not tempted to use the internet as evening entertainment um, and to find something else. So um, read or meditate or just get to bed earlier. And what this means is that in the morning, I also have uh, <laughs> I have my phone in airplane mode and, um, during my morning activities, I, I get to experience viscerally the desire to go back online because it, it's up to me when I actually choose to go back online. And as I go through my morning routine, I'm making breakfast, I'm making tea, um, I can really feel it, uh, like internally, like physically, like a sensation um, that I want to go on the internet and do whatever it is that I do there. I mean, it's really mundane. Check your email, get rid of some spam, um, clear out all your notifications on a dozen different chat platforms, whether it's WhatsApp or Telegram or slack or whatever um and it it's this uh impulse that uh, i was really noticing a couple of weeks ago which was that it's an impulse to do something um and i think that a lot of people um tend to to put meditation practice in the same bucket as 
getting exercise and uh, cooking a healthy meal and things like that, which is, which is understandable, but it's slightly different in one respect. Um, and that respect is that um, meditation is inherently, to some extent, doing nothing. So when you're meditating, you are not talking to your family you are not watching TV, you are not checking your phone, you are not reading a book, you're not reading a magazine, you're not going out for a walk, you're not doing anything actively, you're not doing anything externally. Um, and on its own, it, it does look kind of like you're doing something, you go and you sit down somewhere and then you start meditating and then at some point you're done meditating and then you get up and the time that you spent sitting down doing that activity is it's scheduled into blocks like everything else in your day so you have time for breakfast and you have time for work and you have time for exercise and whatever else um and in this respect, I, I kind of I compare resistance to meditating, um, to addiction to cigarettes. So um, the question, how do I deal with resistance to meditate is kind of like the question, how do I stop smoking? And the answer ultimately is, <laughs> it always is. No matter how you quit smoking, the answer is, don't you just don't do that right um there's an activity that you uh you feel you have an impulse to do right but that impulse is totally internal there's there's nothing in the outside world which is causing you to smoke and so um when you decide that you're not going to smoke anymore or that you're not going to smoke right now um that's actually a choice to do nothing right the, these people often kind of invert this and it's like the the addiction has gripped me and i'm i'm stuck in this situation where i can't i can't help but drink i can't help but smoke um and that's not really true um the fact of the matter is is that when you go smoke a cigarette when you go drink a beer that's the doing something part and when you don't do that that's the doing nothing part. And when it comes to meditation, at least in the modern context, meditation is meditation is sort of on the, the doing nothing side. Um, when it's compared to checking your phone, um, even if for something positive, right? Even to check in with family, even to check in with friends, um, to go on the computer, see what's happening today, how many coronavirus cases. <laughs> um, 10 minutes of meditation is the opposite of all of that. It's saying, I, I am resisting the urge to check and look and read and investigate, um, regardless of how valuable or how noble any of that might be. Um, that you are willing to spend an amount of time, um, in this case, 10 minutes, right, by yourself. And that's actually kind of the hard part. It's the same thing as quitting smoking. Those of us who've ever smoked, we all know that it's not easy to quit smoking. Um, it's certainly not as easy as, oh, just don't do it. Um, but the reason that it's not easy is because when you're not smoking, um, you're pulled toward this thing, right? And it's the same with meditation. Um, I, d I don't think it will matter how many years you meditate or how seriously you meditate. For that first five to ten minutes, when you sit down to meditate, um, if you're going to meditate for a longer period of time, you're still kind of bound up 
with all your day-to-day -day stuff. So you're still worried about the number of coronavirus cases. You're still worried about how your mom is doing. You're still worried about your taxes. You're still worried about um, the everyday sphere of life. And that's perfectly normal, but um, it's interesting to watch in the same way that it's interesting to sit there and make breakfast and have the phone beside you, but you're not paying attention to the phone and you feel yourself wanting to get the phone to turn it out of airplane mode and see what's going on on the on the internet in the world when you sit down to meditate the everything is your phone right um, the entire universe is a set of interesting things and at the the bottom end of the spectrum you have your fears and anxieties and sadness and uh, all sorts of other emotional hurdles, obsessions. And on the, the high end of the spectrum, you have good stuff, right? You have ideas and you have a mission and you have a goal in mind and you have all sorts of interesting things that you want to do and you have a present that you want to give someone and you have um, something nice that you want to say to somebody and that's still that's still the phone actually so um, it's it's everything that is not you right that's kind of pulling you out that wants your attention and so if you sit down with your breath for 10 minutes you will find that um, in the beginning, you're moving from here to here, right? From anxieties and sadness and obsessions to po maybe positive obsessions. So that idea that you've been having for a really long time, this brilliant thing, this nice feeling, um, love, compassion, um, and you'll find that you still you still need to pull yourself back even from that but that um the meditation gives you an opportunity to kind of witness all of these things so um what is the state of my consciousness what is the seemingly random set of intellectual processes going on in my head right now um, and they'll, they'll kind of churn away, right? Um, and they'll, they'll, they'll take your attention away. Um, and at worst, you will open your eyes and you'll physically get up and you'll go do something else, right? Um, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That happens. Um, but know that that is still a part of meditation. Like if your meditation gets so boring or so frustrating or so uh, overwhelming that you stop doing it and get up and go do something else, um, that that is in fact still bound up inside the space of meditation, right? This is just, this is the ultimate distraction. <laughs> is to actually get up from where you were sitting and go do another thing. Um, it happened to me just yesterday. I mean, um, there's, there's always a reason, um, and, uh, and it'll happen to you lots. But um, I would encourage you to kind of look at the world with this spectrum. Um, so I would say the worst is the phone, right? The absolute worst is the phone. Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that garbage is, is poison, basically. And like, um, some of us still drink, and that is also poison. So, I mean, whatever, you get a dose of it. But um, when you're really indulging in that stuff, that's kind of the bottom end. And you can look at um, your resistance to meditation in that frame so you can say to yourself oh, okay how far away from meditation am i 
Um, because you don't need to even sit down and meditate to do that. You can have your phone in airplane mode and just sit there for a minute, two minutes, and feel whether or not you're anxiously pulled toward the phone and do you want to unlock the phone? Do you want to unlock the phone? Um, and if you do, maybe you should resist that, right? Like, um, for a while, like give yourself five minutes and just know that feeling of like, oh, okay, I really want it. <laughs> and then, I mean, maybe let yourself have it, but um, it, it's a good counterpoint. And then when you do choose to sit down and meditate, then you can frame that on the other side. So you can say, oh, okay, this is, this is nothing, right? This is no family. This is no phone. This is no ideas. This is no philosophy. Um, this is no work. This is no play. It's none of these things. It has nothing to do with any of these things. Um, as long as it's anapana, it's the breath, right? The fact of the matter is, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> like there's not, um, there, on the surface, there's nothing more interesting than that um, about it. It's totally boring. It's entirely banal. Um, and then once you start dissolving the breath and seeing what's inside, it becomes interesting, okay? Um, and then it becomes its own set of distractions. That's fine. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's just this really simple, basic exploration of your own body. Um, but in terms of the external sphere, it's nothing at all. By way of comparison, right? Um, uh, a newborn baby understands its own breath. It can feel its own breath, right? Um, that's kind of the one sense it has even before it can see or hear anything, before it has any cap capacity for recognition. Um, this like droning rhythm is, is with it. Um, and so that is um yeah that's a i've, I've gone on way too long here <laughs> but that's the, that's kind of the um the spectrum that that i would draw out i i would look for some other examples but i think that the electronics in our lives um and the other distractions right like i i think it could be literal intoxicants it could be games um it could be anything um that you can look at those things, positive or negative, right? Both, um, and uh, and compare and contrast them to the nothing of meditation, and then see how much of an impulse you have to do those other things, um, and then try not doing them, which is is all that meditation is, um, in this framework that we've laid out today. Okay, sorry, that was much longer than I meant for it to be. Um, it's probably the heat. <laughs> Jammu is much hotter than Himachal Pradesh. Okay, uh, I have a timer here. Um, for those of you who are working on your own, um, we'll see you, goodbye. Um, I hope you do actually meditate for 10 minutes on your own or longer. Um, and for everyone else, we'll start 10 minutes now.
That's our timer. Apologies for this being quite a long uh, Q&A discussion thing today. Um, I'm not sure why it was quite so rambly. And I also apologize for this laptop. I hope you can't hear the fan because it is severely overheating. <laughs> Good night, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.